Hey everybody. Uh, so today I think we're just going to mess around with some contours and keep it relatively simple um, and try to break up those contours just a bit. Um, so we'll just jump right into Grasshopper um, and let's just go to, let's do Lunchbox maybe for a shape. I want to see how heavy this shape is. Otherwise, if we start to manipulate it, it'll get slower computers down. So I'm going to just rebuild this really quickly. Rebuild surface, and I think that's available in Pufferfish, the plugin. Okay, um, let's just start off with maybe like 22 subdivisions, or for the U and the Vs, and let's see what that bakes out like. Okay, that looks pretty good to me. So keep it relatively simple. So if we start to transform it or contour it, it'll go relatively quick. Um, let's go ahead and just twist this so we get some kind of dynamic feel starting to happen here. Let's plug that right into here. We need to give it a line in which it'll twist onto. All right. Do a negative number. Z. Let's just do 25 for the line. Line there. Let's plug it into here. See how fast it goes. Hopefully it's not too slow. Uh, here we go. It's loading. And it's still pretty slow, but that's all right. And then let's just do like a 12 for the angle. Let that load up again. And then maybe instead of just twisting it in the kind of the Z direction, what if we do like the Y direction? As well, I'm just going to copy and paste up that 12 to the, or the X direction. Sorry, hopefully, it'll kind of warp itself around. Give it just a second more. Yeah, that looks pretty sweet. Let's see what it looks like rendered. Give it just a sec. Yeah, it looks pretty cool, especially through here. Awesome. Then from here, um, I'm going to just slice this up just a bit more. And I wonder if we rebuild it again, just because with that twist we add more subdivisions. See if it affects the overall shape significantly. Might be a little bit better and it'll run faster. Okay. And then from here, I'm just going to populate the geometry and let's just do 15 for now. So not a lot of points onto there. And then we're going to put some boxes onto here. We could just do center box. Um, and then let's do like 35, because what we're going to do is slice this all up into different sections. Let's do 35 for the X and the Z, and then we'll leave the Y relatively small. Plug that into our points there. Okay, I'm going to bring the Y pretty small in there, even smaller probably. Get some nice separation happening and then for each one of these boxes um, I'm just going to type in volume we'll get the, the centroid out of it we'll type in rotate and we're going to try to just give it a little bit of variety through here we're going to need a list length which we could just use the 15 but we'll just go with this for now um, and we'll plug the volume into here we'll need a series and we'll do the list length right there we're going to rotate around these points there. Let's do a YZ plane maybe rather than XY. Yeah, we could do XY for the first one. We'll rotate twice probably. Um, angles, we'll switch that over to degrees. We'll plug this into our series. And for now, we'll just type in 25. We can mess with that later if we need to. And then for here, all I'm going to do is just copy and paste it over, plug it into the original uh, rotate. And we're just going to rotate around each one of those centers. That should give us some fairly cool cuts starting to emerge from the scene here. Awesome. And then we're going to go up to the X tab up here. We're going to do a uh, Boolean difference on this. So we're going to do A minus B. A being our twisted shape that we had originally. We'll give it a second to load up. sec. There we go. Hopefully it worked. Looks like it did. So if we were to bake this out, 
Should have some pretty cool cuts starting to emerge throughout our twisted shape there. Go to shade of view. Yeah, so getting some really nice marks and curvatures starting to emerge throughout all this. So even though they're straight cuts, you know, we get some really dynamic shapes starting to flow through here. Which is pretty exciting. Okay. And then from here, I'm going to actually take that Boolean difference. I'm going to mesh it out because we're going to play with contours next. Let's type in mesh, B rep. Okay, we'll give it a second. And so if we use meshes uh, for our contours, it'll actually run quite a bit smoother. I'm just going to type in contour. We'll do it twice. And we'll do, let's say, the X direction. And we'll do the Y direction. Plug that into the vectors there. And then I'm just going to type in 1 for the distance. And since we have two different contours, what I want to do is break up these chunks into random list. Just like that. And then we can start to bring it into here, bring it into here. There we go. We can hide all this. Make sure our cuts are looking good. Okay, now I'm just going to type in bounding surfaces. Duplicate that out. Do one, two. And then again, I'm going to reuse our mesh again. And we'll use our weaver bird to give it a little bit of thickness to each one of these. Go ahead and do that. Do this. Go up to weaver bird tab. And from here, we'll just do weaver bird mesh thicken. I think by default it's pretty high, so I'm just going to do 0.55. Get that down twice. Do that and that. Now I'm just going to join each one of these out. Flatten it down. Just like so. Let's see what this starts to get us. There we go. Starting to get some pretty interesting stuff starting to happen. Looks like it's a lot more of the... What, is, what direction is this? Looks like a lot more of the X direction. So what I want to do is uh, kind of change the range of the random uh, split list. So uh, if we go to here, I believe, nope, down to here, split. We'll do uh, just type in one period. So now it's all going to be baited towards one side. That would be the X. So we're going to bring that just a bit lower. There we go. I might just bring it up just a bit more. Looks like it's a lot of the Y now. 0.4 should be all right. Bake that out, see what it starts to look like. I think that's more of the look I'm looking for, that's for sure. Might be a little bit too thick for the mesh thicken, so I'm going to bring that down. like that and then maybe we'll uh, increase the number of contours so let's do 0.75 for the contours there wait for it to load up okay so boundary's not working which is fine still getting some pretty interesting cuts throughout here that's looking pretty cool I'm gonna mess with the, the split difference again so now we're getting a lot in the Y direction so Always kind of a constant play with that. I'm not quite sure why the boundary's not working, but it should be fine. Um, I'm going to bring this up back to right around 0.5. Right around in there. See what that starts to give us. All right, bake that out. See what it looks like again. That's about what I want for today. Looks pretty interesting. Yeah, I think we'll work with that. So we have two different meshes, correct? Yep. And one thing, what's the most interesting part? So I'm going to just rotate this up just a bit. Get something a little bit higher. Rotate it out just a hair there. Rotate it back. There we go. Starting to get some kind of organic feel starting to flow through here. And then maybe instead of 
typically doing like a totally mirrored section onto here. I wonder if we just kind of rotate it around. So I'll mirror it out just so we have it. Okay, and then I'm just going to rotate it so we get to see different aspects of the model. That could be pretty cool for a view. Actually, I'm going to go back one more. Let's do less contours one more time. Let's stick that back up to one. I'm going to delete out the split. Okay. That's much more interesting because now we're starting to get a little bit more of that organic presence starting to flow through here. A little bit more rugged looking too. Okay, I like that. So I'm going to bring this up just a bit so we get some of those nice plays starting to happen there. And then through here, we'll rotate that out or mirror that out one more time. I'm going to go to our select tab, select the last. Okay, what if we rotate this all the way around? That could be pretty interesting. Rotate it in the Z direction there. And maybe need to keep going. And then what if we rotate it around here? That's pretty interesting. Actually, this whole portion's the most interesting. Let's just rotate it to here. Keep going. pretty cool to me. I'm going to make sure these are just on the same uh, level, or around the same level, I should say. That looks pretty good. Oop, I liked it the other way. What if we keep going just a bit more? Oop. That looks pretty cool. All right, and then I'm just going to take one of or both the meshes. We'll just join these two together, and let's just give it a material for now. And we'll do the other two. Join those out. Let's make it some sort of wood for now. Okay, and then as usual, type in bounding box. Lock down our model. Go back to our shaded view. I'm going to explode out the box. Let's increase size of this uh, surface, we'll type in rebuild, 55 by 55 by 3 by 3 is great, turn our points on, um, today let's just do, let's say, let's just do some random grass kind of flowing through, maybe it's a single trail of grass, tails off in some spots maybe, leave the landscape relatively simple today, let's make that grass, Let's give it a surface for some dirt. Lower down the grass there. Uh, change it. I'm going to type in smooth. We don't probably need to go super far with that. Let's check out our Arctic. I'm going to label this mulch for now. Let's go back to our Arctic, make sure the landscape's looking good. Actually, we can go to render and see what that's starting to look like. I'm going to change our grass because I think it's set up for something else. Uh, maybe we'll change it to sand so we can see. Okay, and then for each of these, I'm just going to kind of move that over. I kind of want them to cradle. So I think our view's right in here. So I might just rotate this a little bit. And then maybe we'll scale it down just a bit. Use right in here. So I'm going to rotate it again. Just so it looks like the grass is kind of rolling through the structures. All right. And I'm just going to raise this up one more time. And we're going to be all set for Lumion. All right. So it imported really nicely. We'll go ahead and start to add some materials here. Do the grass. That looks pretty good. And let's do the soil here. I don't know if 
we do sand, what should we do? Maybe something dry like this. Let's see, that looks all right. Let's do this one. I'm just gonna bring up the relief map quite a ways. Awesome. And let's go ahead and add some materials to the actual model. This one, let's do it, maybe a lighter color material. So we start to get those curves starting to pop through there. And this one, I might actually just do it as a wood. If it doesn't get too dark. Let's turn down the reflectivity. And maybe reflectivity is good. Turn the yeah, well, I guess we'll just kind of leave it. So that looks pretty sweet already. Okay. So uh, we're just going to do kind of low-lying plants today. Um, so let's go to the grass. And yeah, these look pretty good. I'm just going to kind of do it by hand for now. Just kind of flow through here. We could have some kind of satellite kind of things out on the dry land there. Bring it into our foreground. Let's kind of just sprinkle it a little bit everywhere. You could cluster it too. Something just about like this. Okay, let's get by that backside here. Make sure we got it kind of continuous everywhere. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna have some more kind of lonely grass out there and then for the rest of it what we can do is just kind of cluster placement even for back out here probably won't be able to see it anyway so no biggie we could probably do it in here as well as well as out here let's pick a different one let's do kind of taller ones through here just a few not too many do a couple out here down through there and maybe these kind of darker ones as well. Just a few. What else? Um, let's get some fallen trees maybe. Out here. Maybe one out here. And let's get some kind of dead bushes kind of sprinkled through there. Just on the edges and not too many. Let's get some smaller ones just in our foreground here. Okay, and then what I might do is just sprinkle. Ooh, let's undo that real quick. I might just go through on the background and just kind of make almost like a wall of these kind of dead kind of shrubs. So let's do something like this. And then let's go to clusters. And what we'll do is single place all these. We'll just put some dead trees kind of in the background there. I'm just going to do a few rows so we get some kind of layering effects starting to happen. All right, let's add a person or two. Not quite sure what the weather will be, but let's do this, these two. Make sure they're in the grass instead of floating. And we can push them forward just a bit. And let's get some birds. Maybe we'll do some pigeons this time. Awesome. Let's see what it starts to render like. Do a realistic. It's already looking pretty cool. Yeah, it's looking already really nice. Okay, um, I'm gonna fix the camera two point. Just like that. Okay, I'm gonna add in some weather as well. Turn down the quantity of the raindrops so we don't have kind of striping starting to happen through here. Let's add in some fog. 
want to fall off, bring it down. If we get the sun right, this might be a really quick render today. Okay, I'm just going to save this view. Let's go to our, uh, let's go back to the real skies. Change just the setting of the sun there. I liked it dark, but we won't get any of the nice kind of shadowy cascades starting to emerge from here. That's looking pretty good. Not quite sure where it was before. I don't want to go through in Photoshop and having to brighten the heck out of everything just for because of bad sun. Let's try it where it's directly on. It's not as dramatic. Let's go to more of an evening shot, maybe. Make sure the heading's in the right direction. Uh, that looks kind of bad. This is looking pretty nice. Kind of liking that. What happens if we bring it over here? Okay, I might just center out the image there, get on a human level a little bit more. Yeah, that's looking really nice so far. I, I'm liking the shadow and all this stuff, so I'll save this. Um, let's just add in a few different little plants here. Um, maybe just one you know, right in here, potentially. Just a few more of these kind of dead shrubs. And what else? We have kind of a bigger log, potentially. Let's try that out. Just bring a little bit more focus to the foreground there. Zoom out so we can see it. Yeah, so I think this is going to be it. I'm going to shift that over just a bit. Save the camera. Let's test it out one more time. That's looking really great. Um, and I think what we'll do is just go ahead and render full res all right so we might have to just brighten everything up in Photoshop otherwise we'll mess with the Sun a couple more times but overall it's looking really nice and relatively quick so I think we'll just head over to Photoshop next All right, so I think we'll just kind of lighten some areas and just highlight some of the uh, darker areas a little bit. So for these lighter areas, I'm just going to use the dodge tool, just bring it out even for the wood spots there. And then through here, we're just kind of lighten it all up. And then on that tree line, so we don't see the horizon, I'm just going to go through there and just lighten that all up as well through here. And then give just a pop of color to the grass there. Zoom in, try to highlight some of these nice kind of maroon colors in the wood there, or the walnut. Okay, that's looking pretty cool so far. And I'll go ahead and do a typical vignette. So Control Shift N, uh, B for the brush. Just go through the bottom there. All right, top. Lower the opacity there. Okay, and now I'm going to hit Control J. And let's just try out uh, Auto Tone. I don't know if I like that. Let's do Auto Color. Eh, I kind of like it a little bit darker. So we'll go ahead and flatten that out. And if you made it this far, thanks for watching. And uh, please subscribe and like and comment. And uh, I will be talking with you soon.